Hello, it's April from April's Home, and in this video, I'll be sharing with you four recipes using these kielbasa here. I have three here today. Of course, I'll pick up another one for my fourth recipe. I chose three different varieties. They're all really very similar. They have a little bit different flavor, but otherwise they cook up about the same, and I use them pretty much interchangeably in all of these recipes. So I've got here some beef polska kielbasa, some beef smoked sausage, and some turkey smoked sausage. And today I'll be making the first recipe, and the first recipe is a delicious creamy pasta toss using one of these sausages here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the beef smoked sausage in this recipe. We'll save those other two for later. So this again is a pasta toss with a creamy sauce, sort of like a basically an Alfredo sauce, a homemade Alfredo, using this pasta here. So you'll need a box of this pasta or any pasta you have, but I like this recipe with the um, or a quieta, I think that's how you say it, pasta. These little tiny, um, they're not quite shells, they look like little tiny hats or something like that. So the a pound of orchietta pasta, you'll need some frozen peas, and we'll be steaming those. You'll need, of course, your kielbasa, or smoked sausage in this case. You'll need some Parmesan cheese, this is six ounces. I'm not sure if I'll use all of it yet. You'll need some heavy whipping cream, some garlic powder, some ground black pepper and some some butter. I've got half a stick here. This will be to make the Alfredo sauce. And I may add a dash of salt. I've got some salt back here as well. So I may add a dash of salt to um, the sauce, but probably not too much because both the butter and Parmesan have salt in it and so does the smoked sausage. And I don't want it to be overly salty. So the first thing I'm going to do is boil up some water and get my pasta cooking. And while I do that, I will also cut up my smoked sausage and get this frying up in a pan. So I'll come back and show you when I get that all set up. Okay, so I have my kielbasa all cut up. I cut them in coins and the coins are cut in half. Actually, I kind of just slice the whole thing in half and then coin it up and then they come apart like this. So I like them in that size. Um, they're a little bit easier to deal with while you're eating, I think. And I've also got the pasta water getting ready to boil here so I can make my pasta. It says that the pasta will take about nine to 11 minutes to cook. So I may wait a few minutes before I turn on the pan here that I've got for my sausage. I'm going to go ahead and cook this sausage up till it's nice and browned and heated through. Then I'm going to remove it back to the plate there and make my sauce in the same pan. So it'll take on some of the sausage flavor. Then when that's all cooked up, I will return it to the sauce. I'll also be steaming the peas here in a little bit, but first we're gonna go ahead and get this pasta cooking. So as soon as this water boils, I'll come back to show you the next step. So my water is about to boil here. I'm gonna go ahead and add my pound of orchietta pasta. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and use my pasta server to just kind of stir that around a bit. Let that come up to a boil and cook away. It says again that it will take between 9 and 11 minutes. I've also got my sausage cooking away in here. Um, and I'll just keep a watch on that and kind of toss that around so both sides get brown. Then again, when these are done, I'll remove them from this pan and we'll work on our sauce. At this time, you also want to go ahead and steam your peas. So. I have done it in the past where I toss them in with the pasta. That works. This happens to be microwavable in a microwavable bag, so I'm going to go ahead and do it that way tonight just for the ease of it. And you can also steam them in a separate little pot of water. So you'll just want to cook those up um, so they'll be ready to go, be nice and cooked and ready to toss in with the pasta and the sauce and the sausage here. So I'm going to go ahead and get these cooking, get my pasta cooking and the peas uh, steaming and I'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, our pasta is cooking away as you can see here and the sausage has some really nice color on it here. So now I'm going to go ahead and using my slotted spoon, I'm going to remove this to the plate and start making my sauce. So to start, I'm going to go ahead and melt half a stick of butter in the same pan that I cooked my sausage. When this is completely melted, I'll go ahead and add my 16 ounces of heavy whipping cream to the pan here. Okay, so the butter is melted, and now I'm going to go ahead and add the cream. I 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let this warm up now. Stir it in with the butter. And I'll be adding a little salt and pepper and garlic powder to this. And then I'll be adding the Parmesan cheese. First, I wanna get this nice and warm so the Parmesan cheese will melt beautifully. So I'm gonna go ahead now and just add a pinch of salt. Again, I didn't wanna to add too much salt because the cheese and butter already have salt and so does the sausage. Add black pepper, just depending on how much black pepper you like. I like black pepper quite a bit, so I'm gonna be pretty generous with it. I want it to have some good peppery flavor. And same with the garlic powder here. I'm running low, I really need to refill my jar here. But again, just season for how much you like. This is probably a little less than a teaspoon, maybe half a teaspoon or so. And then of course, Stir that around in your pan while we continue to let the cream heat up. Okay, so my cream sauce is nice and hot. I'm gonna go ahead and add this bag of cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and hold back a little bit of this cheese, enough to top the pasta with um, when we serve it. I'm just gonna go ahead and dump that in there. Save just a little bit there in the bag to sprinkle on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and just use this to stir the cheese around until it melts nicely into our sauce and I'll go ahead and continue stirring this until the cheese is nice and melted and then when this is all melted and heated through I'm gonna go ahead and add back in the sausage as well as the steamed peas. Our sauce is ready to go and I'm gonna go ahead now and add back in the sausage here and I'm going to start with um, about half the peas well maybe a little bit more than half here We'll see how that is. We can always add in the rest later. I'm going to go ahead and stir this around in the sauce. Continue to let this heat up while my pasta finishes up. And then using my strainer basket, I'll just transfer the cooked pasta right into this dish here. When it is all cooled, that basket um, strainer will strain the water out nicely. Then I can just toss it all together right into this pan. And then our pasta dish will be ready. So I've pulled out a little piece of pasta to test it. You can see that this is a cute little shape of pasta and it will hold a cream sauce really nicely. Here's my cream sauce still doing very nicely. Another tip, if it starts to get too thick, you can add a little bit of the pasta water to help thin this out a little bit if you want to. But I'm gonna wait until we get all the pasta in and see how it's doing just as it is before we see if we wanna add in any more peas or any of the pasta water. My pasta is done, and now I'm going to go ahead and transfer it into the pan here. I have also decided to add the rest of the peas. I think it definitely looks like it could use some more. I'm just going to go ahead and stir this all together, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's all done. Here it is, all stirred together. And this is pretty much the whole meal. It's a one dish meal. You could serve this alongside of some garlic bread or a salad or something like that. I'm serving it tonight with some garlic bread. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get this plated up and I'll show you how it turned out. So here is my creamy kielbasa pasta toss all served up. You can see I've added a little bit of Parmesan cheese to the top and I'm serving that with a piece of garlic bread. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try. Okay, so I've got a little bit of everything here, a piece of pasta, some peas, and some sausage. And now I'm gonna give this a try. And that is absolutely delicious and it came together in the length of time that it took to heat up the water and boil up the pasta. That's how quick this meal was to prepare. It probably took less than around 20 minutes or so. So that is my first kielbasa meal. And now let's take a look at my second meal. For my next kielbasa meal, I'm going to be making a sheet pan dinner. So I've got here a beef Polska kielbasa and I've got one and a half pounds of little potatoes here. This is the potatoes from the little potato company both red and gold little potatoes. I've got some green beans here, a couple of onions that I'll be chopping up, a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and Italian seasonings. And that is all we're gonna need for tonight's dinner. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean and slice in half all of my potatoes here. I'm also going to slice up my kielbasa, and I'm going to cut my onions into good sized pieces, like that big, nice pieces for roasting. So I'm gonna start by cutting up my veggies and I'll get those in a bowl and I'll come back and show you how I season those up. I've cut up my potatoes. You can see I've cut them all in half as well as done a large rough chop on my onions here. I've got them all in a bowl here. I've sliced up all of my kielbasa just into little coins here. 
I've got my green beans ready to go as well. I also have my oven preheating to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to start this out at 400. If I don't think that 400 is cooking this fast enough, I may raise the temperature to 425. But I'm going to start out at 400 just so I can be sure and not burn these. So the oven is preheated to 400 degrees. And now I'm going to go ahead and take some olive oil and drizzle it through my potatoes and onions here. Okay, So I'm just going to do a little drizzle here. And then I'm going to go ahead and using this spoon, I'm going to stir this together here in just a minute. I'm also going to be um, adding my green beans soon too, but I thought I'd kind of get the oil coated on the potatoes and things first before adding my frozen veggies. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all mixed together. I've got that tossed together nicely. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my green beans. Okay. And now I'm going to add just a little bit more olive oil on top of the green beans here. Just a little drizzle. And I'm going to go ahead now and mix these together with the potatoes and onions. And then we'll add some seasoning and mix that in. Everything is coated with a nice little thin layer of olive oil. Now I'm just going to sprinkle in some Italian seasonings here. Not too much, just enough when it tosses together. It'll just give a little bit of Italian seasonings on all of the different veggies there, as well as some black pepper and a few dashes of sea salt. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and get this all tossed together. So you can see I've got that all mixed together. The spices have been distributed nicely throughout the mixture. And now I'm going to go ahead and add in my sausage here, my little kielbasa coins. And I'm going to get this all mixed together. I'm going to double check that there is enough olive oil on everything. And then I'm going to transfer it to my baking sheet here. So my mixture is all mixed together. It's as simple as that. I'm now going to transfer this to the baking sheet. So here is my kielbasa sheet pan dinner ready to go. Green beans, potatoes, onions, and kielbasa with a little drizzle of olive oil, some Italian seasonings, salt, and pepper. I'm going to go ahead and put this in a 400 degree oven. I'm going to come back and check it in about 15 minutes and give it a stir just to kind of turn everything around and give everything a chance to roast evenly. So I'll come back and check in halfway with our sheet pan dinner here. Here is my sheet pan dinner about 15 minutes in. I'm going to go ahead and take my little spoon here, kind of just toss things around a bit. These are not quite ready to go or anything like that, but they've definitely got a good start to cooking here. I'll come back in another 15 minutes and check them again. You can hear everything sizzling now. It's been another 20 minutes. You can see that the sausages are starting to cook. The green beans have a little bit of a roasted color on them. And um, so do the onions. I'm going to go ahead and give these another stir and put them in for another 15 minutes. I cooked these for another 15 minutes and now I'm increasing the temperature to 425 and I'm going to cook them for about 10 to 15 more minutes. I feel like the potatoes are pretty well cooked through. I would just like them to have a little bit more color and then I think this will be ready to serve. So my sheet pan kielbasa dinner is all done. The green beans are nice and cooked. You can see a little color on the onion. The potatoes are all roasted and so is the kielbasa. So I'm going to go ahead now and serve this up for dinner. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and give this a try. I've got it all served up here. We've got some green bean, onion, and sausage with a little piece of potato here. And that is really delicious. I'm excited for dinner tonight. This looks like a wonderful meal. It's very simple. Everything in one sheet pan here. We've got all of our veggies and our starch with the potatoes and our delicious kielbasa. So that was my second dinner recipe using kielbasa. A green bean, onion, potato, and kielbasa sheet pan dinner. This meal took in total about an hour to cook at 400 degrees and I bumped it up to 425 in the last 15 minutes. My next recipe for kielbasa is very easy and one of my favorite quick inexpensive go-to dinners. So you'll need a kielbasa, you'll need a jar of pasta sauce, you'll need some cheese, and you'll need a pound of penne pasta, or any pasta really will work for this. So I've got some water heating up to go ahead and boil up my pasta. I'm going to go ahead and get that cooked and drained, and then I'm going to return it to the pot. I'm also going to go ahead and chop this up into coins, and then I'm going to have the coins um, and then I'm going to go ahead and fry this up a little bit just to give it some color in a frying pan. And I'll come back to show you those steps. And then I'll come back to show you how we turn this into a delicious and easy 
casserole. I'm still waiting for the pasta water to boil, but I've got my kielbasa all um, cut up into slices and then in half. And I'm gonna go ahead now, I've got this on the burner here in a little skillet. I have sprayed the bottom of the skillet with a little bit of pan spray. I'm just gonna kind of toss these around on the heat until they get a little bit of color. And then I'll go ahead and set these aside while our pasta cooks and until we're ready to assemble our penne pasta casserole. You will also need a casserole dish sprayed with pan spray as well. And we can go ahead now and preheat our oven to 350. Our pasta is boiling away and I think our kielbasa has enough color on it right now so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it from the heat and I'll come back when the pasta is all cooked and drained and we'll go on to the next step. My pasta is cooked and it's been drained. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add our jar of pasta sauce, just right into the noodles there. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this out with a little water and get the rest out. I'll do that in a minute. And then also I'm going to be adding in all of the kielbasa now. Now that the kielbasa and pasta sauce has been added to the penne pasta, I'm gonna go ahead and stir it together really, really well, and then I'll be adding the cheese. So you can see that is how simple it is. It is just an incredibly simple recipe. You can add a little bit more seasoning to the pasta sauce if you like. Sometimes I do add a little bit more oregano and garlic powder and um, things like that but I just thought I'd keep it really simple. This is a way that I make it, just nice and simple. A jar of pasta sauce, some cooked pasta, and a cut up and cooked kielbasa, and then some cheese. So I'm gonna get this stirred together and then we'll add the cheese. Okay, so I'm gonna add just about two cups here of cheese, and I'm gonna stir this all together now. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this in my casserole dish. My casserole dish has been sprayed with some pan spray. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the dish and then I'll cover it with foil and bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about half an hour or until all this cheese is melted. But first let me get this in the casserole dish. Here is my casserole in the casserole dish and I'm just going to sprinkle a little tiny bit more cheese on the top. I have sprinkled a little teeny tiny bit of cheese on the top as you can see and now I'm going to go ahead and cover this with foil and get it into a 350 degree oven for about half an hour until it is heated through. It is that simple, a very simple pasta casserole great for a quick weeknight and a wonderful low cost dinner. It has been half an hour and our casserole is all cooked up. You can probably even hear it sizzling. It is nice and steamy hot. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get this served up along with a side salad. I have also served this up in the past with steamed broccoli or steamed other steamed veggies, sometimes with green beans. Um, if you wanna stretch out the meal, you could add some garlic bread, but it's just me and my husband tonight. This'll be enough for our dinner and a lot of leftovers as well. So we're just gonna have this with a salad tonight. Here is our casserole all served up. You can see I've served that with a side salad here a little bit of blue cheese dressing. And I have a nice serving of casserole here sprinkled with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and try a bite here. Get a piece of the kielbasa along with the penne pasta. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try, but I know I love this meal. I have made this for many years. This just comes together so quickly and so nicely. It is a great meal to try and very easy to make. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try. And just like always, that is delicious. I love the flavor of this casserole with the little bits of sausage in it. It really gives it a nice flavor. I also make this casserole with hamburger sometimes, but it is so quick and easy to make it with kielbasa. It's definitely one of our family's favorite ways to use kielbasa. So that is our third recipe for kielbasa. And next up, I'll share our fourth kielbasa recipe. Here is our last kielbasa recipe. I'm going to make a kielbasa potato and cabbage soup. There are so many wonderful things that you can make with kielbasa. Even though this is the last of the four recipes in this video for kielbasa, there are so many other wonderful ways to use kielbasa for budget-friendly cooking. I will also go ahead and link below my recipe for sweet and sour kielbasa over rice. That's a delicious meal that we love to make. Kielbasa can be cooked up as a nice side dish to any meal. One meal that I am going to be making coming up will be kielbasa with some um, 
good veggies like maybe broccoli and cauliflower and some pierogies. That's a really good side dish for pierogies as well. So, so many things that you can make with kielbasa. I would definitely encourage you to explore a lot of different recipes for kielbasa because it is such a budget-friendly protein to cook with. But again today for our last kielbasa recipe in this video, we're doing a soup. A cabbage and potato soup with our kielbasa. So of course you'll need a cabbage and we'll be chopping that up here in a bit as well as some small potatoes. You'll need some carrots. If you do not have frozen carrots, you can also use fresh carrots. You'll need a bunch of celery. We're gonna chop that up. And along with our celery, we'll need one large onion that we will also chop up and saute with that celery. And I have included some mushrooms today because I have them and we love mushrooms, but mushrooms are definitely optional for this soup. We do, again, we love mushrooms. And I think that mushrooms go along great with kielbasa and potatoes and cabbage. So we love to add those as well. Um, you'll need a big box of chicken broth, three pounds of chicken broth there, or the equivalent of your own chicken stock, or um, some water flavored with bouillon. Um, so that's what I'm using today though, three pound box of the chicken broth. You'll need a little bit of olive oil to saute your veggies. If you are not using frozen carrots, you will also saute your fresh cut carrots along with the celery and onion. And then you'll need some seasonings. Today I've chosen Italian seasoning, salt and pepper, and a little bit of garlic. That's my typical go-to seasoning blend for all of my soups. So to get started, I'm gonna go ahead now and chop up my celery and onion and get them sauteing in a pan with a little drizzle of olive oil. So I'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, so I've turned off the burner for a second because it was just too steamy and loud, but what I'm doing now is sauteing my onions and celery in just a little drizzle of olive oil. I'm gonna keep stirring those around until they start to soften up and become a little bit translucent, just to kind of get this soup started. This is the way that I love to start my soups with my celery and onions, and of course my carrots too if they're raw. But when they're frozen, I just add them in at the end of this process, which you'll see as soon as these are all sauteed up, I will go ahead and add the carrots and the broth. So I'm going to go ahead and continue sauteing up my chopped up celery, washed and cleaned chopped up celery and chopped up onion in a little drizzle of olive oil until they are starting to get nice and translucent and cooked. I am partway through sauteing and I thought I would share with you a tip. If you're sauteing your veggies and they start to seem like they're going to be sticking or they're cooking a little hot, you can add in a little bit of chicken broth. So of the chicken broth that I'll be adding here when these are a little bit um, more cooked through, I added a splash of that in and that way it kind of helps steam up the veggies um, while they're sauteing away. So I'm going to continue cooking these for just a little bit longer and then we'll add the rest of our broth and carrots. Another thing I forgot to mention in the ingredients at the beginning is a can of diced tomatoes. This is a 14.5 ounce can of diced tomatoes another ingredient that I almost always add into my soup. So we'll be adding this as well when we add the broth and the carrots. Now we'll go ahead and add our three pound box of broth. We'll be adding water too um, here in a bit just to bring up the level to where we want this. So we've added our broth and now we're gonna go ahead and add our frozen carrots. So now we're adding our 12 ounce bag of sliced carrots. Okay, we'll break these up here with our little spatula just like so and get that stirred in. And we'll also be adding our 14.5 ounce can of diced tomatoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up to a boil and let that start to cook. But before we do that, we're also gonna add some seasonings. I'm going to add a few dashes of Italian seasoning and just season to your own preference. We will be seasoning this soup again too um, before we serve it. I always like to Season my soups at the beginning, middle, and end as I taste the broth. So there's a little bit of salt and some pepper. And at the beginning, I only like to add a little dash of garlic. We'll add a little more garlic at the end. So we'll get those stirred in. And I'm, again, I'm gonna go ahead and let this come up to a boil and I'll get a lid here propped on and then I'll be cleaning and chopping up my potatoes and my cabbage. So that's what I'll do next. And I'll be adding the potatoes and cabbage when I get this up to a little bit more of a boil. And I'll also be adding water at that point. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let this cook and I'll be back with the next step. 
Here you can see I've chopped up my little bag of potatoes. This was a tricolor blend of potatoes. It's got some baby red, some little baby yellow potatoes, and even came with a couple of these purple potatoes, which I think will be really fun in this soup. Of course, any potato variety would work. If you're using the softer skin varieties like the gold, red, and purple, you can leave the skin on. If you're using russets, I would take off some of that skin, but you don't have to if you like that. Um, I think the best uh, potatoes for this uh, recipe would definitely be the little red and the little gold potatoes. So I've got those all chopped up and I'm just waiting for the soup to come to a boil before I add these and next I'll get my cabbage chopped and cleaned as well. Okay so the temperature has started to come to a low boil and we're going to go ahead now and add the potatoes. Okay. We'll also be adding some water at this point. I've got four cups of water here. Let's see how much I go ahead and add might take all four. I added the full four cups of water here. We'll go ahead and give this a stir and let that come back up to a boil while I go ahead and clean and chop up my cabbage. Okay, so we've got our cabbage all chopped up and ready to go in the soup now as well. So I'll go ahead and transfer this to the pot of soup. I've added the cabbage to my soup here and I'm just going to kind of work it down in there. This will of course wilt here right away and work down into the soup. But if it seems like it needs a little bit more broth, I will add another cup or so of water and I'll let you know if I do that. So I'm just going to continue to let this soup cook away and let that cabbage incorporate. I might give this broth a taste. A lot of times when I do a dish with cabbage or tomatoes, I do like to add a little bit of sugar. I've never really added sugar to a soup, but I might add in a little uh, tablespoon of either brown sugar or white sugar. But I'm going to wait to do that until I taste how um, this soup develops as it cooks away. So I'm going to go ahead and let this return to a simmer and I'll put a lid on this and let this cook away for probably about an hour and let all those veggies cook up. In the meantime, um, after about half an hour or so, I will go ahead and chop and have um, make little half coins of the kielbasa and also clean and chop up the mushrooms and we'll be sauteing those separately before we add them to the soup. But I'm going to go ahead and let this cook away for about half an hour, 45 minutes before I start browning up the kielbasa and mushrooms to add to the soup. Now I've got my mushrooms cleaned and chopped up and I'm going to go ahead and put them here in a little skillet. And I'm going to go ahead and saute these for a bit while they are sauteing. I'm going to cut up my kielbasa and I'm going to add them to this pan to saute with the mushrooms until they're nice and cooked up and then we'll add those to the soup. I have cut up my kielbasa into little half coins and I've put them in here with the mushrooms and I'm going to go ahead and saute these until the sausage has become browned and the mushrooms have been cooked down a little bit, maybe get a little color themselves. I'll just move them around with my spatula and let those cook away. Here is my soup. It's doing pretty well. I'm going to stir this soon and I do think I'll go ahead and add a little bit of sugar to this when I add the rest of the ingredients as well as some more spices. So I will come back and show you how this turns out when it's all cooked up and we'll add that to the soup and do the final seasoning and then we'll let that soup finish up and get it served up for dinner. Okay, so I've got my sausage and mushrooms all cooked up. I'm just gonna go ahead and add them to my soup. The um, heat has turned down a little bit but I will increase the temperature there and get this back to simmering. I'll add the rest of that in a minute but first I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more garlic to taste. Some more pepper, more salt, and some more Italian seasoning. We'll go ahead and get that all stirred together. I'm going to go ahead and bring this back up to a boil. Let this cook for about another 20-25 minutes or so just to make sure all the veggies are cooked through and the sausage has a chance to help flavor up that broth and the mushrooms incorporate with everything as well. Also because of the tomato and cabbage in here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little touch of sugar to help with the acidity of the tomatoes and a little sugar is always nice with cabbage. So I'm gonna go ahead now and add about a teaspoon of brown sugar. Okay, so just a teaspoon, a little tiny bit of brown sugar there. That should help cut down the acidity 
and um, enhance the cabbage there a little bit too. So we'll go ahead and bring this up to a boil, let it cook away for about 25 minutes, and then I'll come back and show you how it turned out. So our soup is all done and ready to serve. I've got a delicious loaf of sourdough bread that I bought at the bakery today while I was picking up the uh, potatoes for the soup. So I'm gonna go ahead now and serve up a bowl along with our sourdough bread, and I'll show you how it turned out. Here is how my soup turned out. It's all served up with a nice big piece of sourdough bread. You can see all the delicious veggies in this soup and the nice rich broth here. You can see the sausage in there and mushrooms. So I'm gonna go ahead now and try a bite here. So here is a bite with a little bit of everything. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this soup a try. And that tasted absolutely wonderful. And this is a great soup. I made a huge pot of soup with just the one kielbasa and all these delicious veggies. Great way to stretch that uh, kielbasa there. This is definitely going to be enough for me and my husband to eat for quite a few days couple dinners and a couple lunches. And that wraps up my kielbasa recipe video here. So those were four wonderful recipes with ways to use kielbasa for really budget-friendly dinners. Again, kielbasa is a wonderful budget-friendly ingredient and I hope you try some of these recipes out as well as try some of the many other wonderful recipes out there for kielbasa. So I hope you enjoyed checking out my four kielbasa dinners here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.